Hey everybody, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Terry Hunter. I'm an intuitive astrologer and I'm here today to talk about the full moon in Virgo. It's at 16 degrees. This is the sixth of seven full moons at the 16th degree, which very strongly to me indicates a pattern, a pattern of illumination and a pattern of reconciliation. Before I start this video, just let me give you some parameters of how this is going to work. I base these videos on whole sign Western astrology. So when I talk about um, a sign or a house, I'm referring to it from your rising sign. If you don't know your rising sign, you can go to any one of the free birth calculators on the internet. You just need your exact time of birth and your location. This is also based on Pacific time zone. So please adjust for your location. All right, let's, um, this Virgo full moon is on March 7th, 2023 at 440 AM Pacific, just a few hours before Saturn will move into Pisces and begin a two-year journey through Pisces. In the year 2023, uh, Saturn will move between zero and seven degrees of Pisces. And I bring that up because this full moon is at the 16th degree, which reduces down to a seven. And I believe the number seven is very prevalent in the year 2023. 2023 reduces down to a seven. In numerology, the sevens re uh, reflect or indicate or represent a period of introspection, but from a more Libran energy, from a intellect, from a place of garnishing information rather than judging the information. So I believe that this full moon is very much going to illuminate a process that you've been walking through. The first full moon at 16 degrees was in Aries, which is the first house. And as we see, we're going to traverse the first seven houses of the Zodiac, which are very personal to how the soul processes the journey of the human experience and how they process their own uh, energetic light energy within the human process. So I think this is very powerful because uh, by nature, Virgo represents our health. It represents our service. It represents our the way we process things. It's uh, ruled by Mercury. It rules our employment. It rules employers. It also is referenced um, or referred to as the servant. In previous historic generations, that would equivalent, equivalent, equivalent. What is that word? It would be the equivalent of the servant. So I believe that this moon is reflecting where you have been enslaved to something and that you have evolved beyond that. And it's offering you an opportunity for identification of where you have inadvertently um, put yourself in a position of being obligated or dutiful to something that may have expired, may have, you may have outgrown it, or there may be in some ways, this obligation to some sort of service is distracting you or keeping you from developing your own sense of um, fulfillment in this life through your own endeavors. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with Aries, and I'm going to talk about some of the aspects that this full moon is going to be making. Uh, one of the things I did not include, but I want to say up front is that during this time, we have Pluto squaring the north and south node. Pluto will continue to make various um, uh, orbs within the square. So it will tighten in some places and then it will loosen up as Pluto moves from 29 degrees Capricorn to zero degrees Aquarius and then retrogrades again back into Capricorn. And then the nodes are going to change from the Taurus Scorpio axis to the Libra Aries axis. A square Pluto, transformation, death and decay, the deep psycho psychological platform with which I take my actions on. And for me, a square is this tense 
conversation between an old version of myself, a patterned version of myself, a, a familiar habitual way of thinking of how I show up, how I create value, and then a new version of what I want to experience, a new version of how I create value for myself as well as for others. And the the tenseness comes from the transformation and reconciliation of this dynamic of putting yourself at a priority and then reviewing and perceiving that as service to others without actually working for them. So this is sort of in a metaphysical way, um, metaphoric way. So when I say work, it doesn't necessarily mean your job, but maybe your position within the way you make money, perceiving how you make resources, and then opening this up a bit. Again, this full moon is going to illuminate where you have uh, inadvertently enslaved yourself to a dynamic that may no longer serve your greatest and highest good. So let's jump in and let's talk about um, let's talk about Aries. We're going to start with Aries and work our way towards Pisces. The full moon for Aries is going to be in your sixth house. And this moon is making an aspect. It's called an injunction. Okay. The in I'm sorry, in conjunction. And this is like a blind spot. It's it the angle is such that it's just slightly off a bit. I think it's known as a 150 degree angle. Don't quote me. I don't have my notes here, but it's a place we don't see easily. It's like it's like going down a road and you're about to go around the corner. So you know you're going around the corner, but you can't quite see what is on the other side of that corner. And where this is in uh in conjunct is that the moon at six 16 degrees Virgo is making this aspect to Venus and Aries at 18 degrees. Chiron is at 14 degrees. And then Chiron is conjunct Jupiter at 13 degrees. So we have this, a bit of this orb that is expanding and illuminating what we have not seen before, where we have inadvertently maybe made a priority of someone else. Again, Virgo is your sixth house of work, your house of service, your house of your health. And if for some reason, Aries, you're in a place of feeling angry or frustrated, Chiron is the wound that we, uh, we as a soul, have put an intention to work on in this lifetime, to address, to transform into the gift. And so having your ruling planet Mars going through Gemini, which is your third house, uh, for such a long period of time, this could really have you reflecting on how you have been perceived by your workmates, your teammates, your siblings, your cousins, your early childhood experience. And I want to offer it this way because I believe this illumination could potentially be an opportunity to rather than try to release something, the full moon uh, is the culmination of a cycle. This is an opportunity to incorporate it and to use it as a platform of empowerment. So if you feel this energy or this stress or this um, bit of something that feels slightly distasteful coming up, it gives you an opportunity to slow your roll and 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 give your, yourself an opportunity to look and see what's going on. Because the moon at 16 degrees Virgo is making a trine to Uranus at 15 degrees Taurus in your second house. And it's making a... Um, a sextile to the sun in your 12th house of Pisces. So we see a family history and, and ancestral history played out in the second and the 12th house. So this is an opportunity to have some sort of epiphany, to have some sort of um, thought that suddenly releases you or I hate the word release because it feels as if I'm letting something go. It really feels more like an incorporation to me. It's where the black spots make the color pop in my life. And here it has a lot to do with Pisces is where we spend time alone, where we can sometimes feel isolated. It's a place where um, traditionally the human vessel is released and we go back into the collective. It's also a very creative house. It's a very intuitive house. It's a very sensitive house. And often sometimes it can escape. And here with Aries, you may tend to escape into your, you know, anger. 
that that is one of the things I'm an Aries rising. So I, I know this, this energy very well. And at the same time, I can now sort of liberate myself by allowing myself my creative ideas, Uranus, to allow my personal expression, Uranus, to allow my hopes and my dreams, Aquarius, Uranus rules Aquarius in the 11th house. So this is an opportunity to allow your dreams to be the focal point rather than where you've been from. Because the last thing that I think is important um, for this full moon is that it will be making an aspect to Mars, your ruling planet in Gemini. And Mars is spending its last few weeks in Gemini. It's been there for almost seven months. And in March, we, on March 7th, we have this full moon. We also have Saturn moving into Pisces. On the 23rd of the month, we have Pluto moving zero degrees Aquarius. And I believe the 25th is when Mars actually goes into Cancer. So this is a very uh, pivotal time where, again, this square, because we're seeing the square both from the sun and the moon to Mars. This is this tense conversa conversation within yourself about an old version of what other people potentially expect, how you have created value for others, and are you putting yourself at a priority? And if there is trepidation or fear that you, if you were to put yourself as a priority, you would actually uh, ruffle the feathers of others, then this is something to consider um, about how important you, your own personal view of what you do in the way of your service to others. Because this again is in your sixth house. And I think it's an opportunity to release yourself from obligation and sit yourself in a position of opportunity that does indeed serve, but from a place where you feel fulfillment. All right, let's talk to our Taurus rising. This Virgo full moon is going to be in your fifth house. The fifth house by nature rules children, the conception of children. It rules romance. It rules hobbies and pleasure and fun and entertainment. It's naturally ruled by Leo. And here, I believe there's going to be some sort of full um, Virgo being your being your fifth house is going to give you an opportunity to really see where there is the potential of you've been operating on a historic wound when it comes to your own personal pleasure, your own personal expression, your, your ability to create um, romance and create family and children within your life, if that's indeed something you want. This moon is making an in conjunction in conjunction to Venus, Chiron, and loosely to Jupiter. And here, this is in your house of Aries, which is your um, 12th house. So this is something that's coming from a, a, a historic place, a place where, you know, Taurus by nature rules history. It rules the family history. It's also ruled by Venus. And here we see this kind of blind spot where this moon is, is I was saying earlier that the, I feel like an in conjunction is sort of this windy road where I'm going down the road and I can see part of it, but I can't see what's around the corner. And here, this feels like it's a part of myself that is purporting a wound, purporting a holding myself small. And this full moon is offering me an illumination where I have inadvertently agreed to what has been assigned to me, agreed to what has been imprinted upon me through my childhood experience about my creativity, about my, um, my spending time doing things I enjoy. If you think about humans, when they see you, they're like, Hey, how are you? How's work going? You know, how's everything is, is, the human, are you married yet? There's a lot of com weird compartmentalizing in how we exchange conversation. So here, I believe for my Tauruses that you have this opportunity because Aries being your 12th house, again, is what you cannot see. There's, there's this sense, Aries is the first house of self and the 12th house sits behind me. So with Venus representing your money, your self-worth and self-confidence, your talents, Chiron representing the wound that we all agree to work on and wherever it is in our chart indicates the, the work we want to do. And then Jupiter expanding our beliefs and giving us an opportunity to have new faith in ourselves as we identify ourselves versus what has been assigned to us. 
because the moon at 16 degrees Virgo will make a trine to your first house and Taurus and Uranus is offering you this liberation, this, this new way of thinking. And it has been traversing your first house for years now, since like 2017. So you've been going through this series of renewals and opportunities where you can stand in an energy that really is more aligned to your hopes and your dreams, and then methodically taking energetic steps first to anchor in your belief and then take action based on that. Um, because the sun is also making a sextile to Uranus and Taurus. So these are two favorable aspects that are offering you liberation and even potentially this inspiration to allow your brilliance to be birthed into the world. We do have um, what I believe is a bit of a tense aspect, which is Mars making a square to both the sun and the moon, the sun in Pisces, the moon in Virgo, again, 16 degrees. And this is a loose square, but it is, um, to me, it's important because Mars is about being brave. Mars is about independence. Mars is about me, myself. And here we're making this, this tense conversation between an old version of myself and the new version I want to birth. And there's a, the human will always consider other people, no matter how independent they are, they can't help it. We're imprinted to extract our value in as to how other people respond to our gifts and our talents. So here, Taurus, this is a real opportunity for you to allow yourself this um, new eyes on an old version of you and integrating the old with the new versus feeling a tension of having to give up one for the other. And I think that's again, where the square comes in because Mars is asking you to be brave and pioneering in a new way. And Taurus doesn't always wanna do that. Taurus enjoys uh, the familiar, what feels comfortable. And, and I wanna mention that Pisces, while, while the sun is traversing through Pisces, this is your 11th house. And again, the 11th house, while it rules the world wide web, and it rules, you know, our nervous system and it rules large groups of people. It also rules your hopes and your dreams. And it is an upachaya house that gives reward over, over time, over effort and human effort as they dis, uh, describe it. And that infers action. I personally, as an intuitive astrologer, think that effort comes into asking myself repeatedly, what do I believe about myself and the viability of my dreams coming true and nurturing that aspect, because I think that's going to be really important. And again, I think one of the most powerful things about this full moon is the in conjunction to Venus and Chiron and Jupiter. It's a wound that I operate on, but I don't necessarily have an awareness of it while it's happening. And as I open up to this patterned behavior that I operate on, I have an opportunity to have it come to a uh, a culmination and use it as a platform to step forward versus something anchoring me to the, my history. Gemini, this full moon is going to be in your fourth house of home of, of <clears throat> the first thing I thought of is my homeland, my country, the home that I live in, but also my intuitive body. How much do I trust my, uh, the feelings that I have? Gemini is a thinker. Gemini is ruled by Mercury. And this full moon is in the sign of my self-nurturing and my intuition. When, when I do these readings, I'm very much inspired to address each one of you as an individual and to tell you how important your dreams are because your dreams and your pursuit of your own happiness actually invites others to do that. And it sets a tone and a vibration that humans up until now have not experienced. We're told to be selfless. We're told to be caring about other people. And oftentimes it's to the detriment of our own happiness. So here in the fourth house, house, there's the our obligations to our family, there is obligations to the nurturing of other people. And now I want to offer that this 
moon and it's in conjunction to Venus at 18 degrees Aries, Chiron at 14 degrees Aries and Jupiter at 13 degrees Aries is a real illumination of my beliefs, my self-worth, my, my association with my upbringing and my home life and how it imprinted me with certain ways of thinking. And now I have an opportunity to expand upon that thinking, to broaden it, to re- invent my philosophies and ideologies. And in doing so, I'm actually of greater service to other humans because the moon at 16 degrees Virgo, the sun in its opposition at 16 degrees Pisces is also making a trine and a sextile to Uranus at six, 15 degrees Taurus. This is in your 12th house. So there is an opportunity through an harmonious two harmonious aspects, the sun sextiling Uranus and the moon trining it to extract. Not This is not about assigning blame to others. You know, humans do the best they can do. And most humans don't even know that they operate on a certain imprint. So this is an awareness for Gemini to come to some sort of illumination because Taurus being your 12th house, that's my ancestral experience. This is this is a house of deep spirituality and of time spent alone in reflection. Yes, it does represent, you know, hospitals and health. I think of it as, well, mental health, it does represent, but this is an opportunity to really reconcile your family experience. We're seeing the fourth and the 12th house here that naturally fourth house is where the moon is having its fullness at 16 degrees. And then Taurus being your 12th house is, again, that family history that feels unconsciously familiar. And there may be a certain amount of expectation that you perceive is put upon you. Because Aries, um, I didn't mention this, Aries is your 11th house. So when, when the moon is making this in conjunction to your 11th house, it's really um, illuminating your wants, your desires, what you believe about you, the ability for you to thrive and to prosper and to make material resources as you pursue your dreams. The, you know, the thing about it is when we, when we look at our family dynamic and we see it as just a piece of information versus as a blaming energy or a regretting energy or a, a you know, anything that, is tethering us to that, then we can actually take that energy. And rather than being tethered to a, a more challenging dynamic, we can liberate ourselves and then encompass others as, you know, and bring them with us as we pursue our dreams. Because Gemini, Mars has been going through your first house for ever in a day. And because of that, there's been this real growing tension of, of, wanting to live, I want to say it this way, because Mars is a pioneering spirit. Mars is a hero. Yes, Mars is the warrior, but he's also the decorated military hero with the purple heart. So there's something about that purple heart that's coming to me right now. And it feels as if Mars has been talking to you for almost all of 2022, asking you what's important to you. Where are you willing to put your own wants and desires and be brave enough to step out onto that pathway and then allowing that to be birthed? Pisces is your is your 10th house of career. And I do believe that there has been being a shift um, about the career that you have or how you perceive your value within your career, your public status, and an opportunity in some ways to really stand in leadership as you experience this, this opposition between the moon and the sun. Again, a full moon is an illumination, an illumination of what is so important to you, what sits beneath you, that fourth house of of uh, Virgo, and then what is sitting above you in the way of possibilities, Pisces, and Pisces is a creative sign as well. So if for some reason you've wanted to start writing something, or you've wanted to start, you know, expressing your talents, rather than trying to abandon something that has been providing resources for you, you have an opportunity to work a tandem road, nurture your dreams and desires while you allow your day job to provide the resources you need, and then allow yourself the journey of discovery along the way.
Okay, now for my cancers, this Virgo full moon is going to be in your third house. As I said that, I felt like it is a very strong energy to identify how you think and how you speak. And are you inadvertently making a case for whatever lack you may be feeling or wherever you may be feeling that there is not prospering? Again, this full moon is making an in conjunction, a blind spot. It is. It very much feels as if it's making this path and I can see part of the road and then I get around a bend and I can't see what's coming. And this is in the form of Jupiter being at 13 degrees Aries. Chiron is at 14 degrees Aries and Venus is at 18 degrees Aries. Um, Aries is your 10th house of career. So to me, there's an opportunity for you to rethink how you express yourself how you, you know, the 10th the house is career, but it's the public status. So you could go from being married to being divorced. You could go from being a single to being married. You could go from here with the, with the full moon being in the third house, it could very much be some sort of um, reconciliation with how you think, what you, the permissions you've given yourself up until now, third house is naturally ruled by Mercury. This is a Virgo full moon. It is the sixth of seven full moons. So this is an opportunity for you to self-nurture as you allow yourself new thoughts, liberated ideas. We have the moon making a trine to Uranus in Taurus. The sun will make a sextile to Uranus in Taurus. This is in your 11th house of hopes and dreams. Um, again, I'll repeat, yes, it's the networks, the World Wide Web, but I'm looking at this from a very personal perspective, because when the human starts to feel happy, starts to feel the viability of their hopes, starts to feel that exhilaration of creation and co-creation with the universe, there is, it's like rocket fuel. It's so exciting and it, and it heals because it balances. And this is an opportunity for this, this full moon to illuminate something in your 10th house sector and how you have been perceiving that because inadvertently you could have been perceiving it as if you were in a less than position because with Pluto opposing your house for all these years, you've been going through a transformation that has in many ways may have felt like a series of small deaths before new life comes. And this is where I believe that you have a real opportunity for new life because Pisces is your ninth house and Pisces is giving you an opportunity to dream bigger, to believe bigger, to, to anchor in to yourself what you believe about yourself and have faith in yourself. Because as we see, um, the, one of the last aspects that I think is important for this full moon is that the sun and the moon are both making a square to Mars. And this is in Gemini. Again, this is your 12th house. So I believe this is where your mind has inadvertently maybe been you know, stuck in an old pattern or an old expectation. My two signs that I have the most concern about being absorbed by their obligations and those that they love is Cancer and Pisces, because you're so nurturing that sometimes you put yourself aside. And I believe that's what this series of moons has been about, because as we claim ourselves, we actually open up to greater energy levels to love on and to nurture and support other people. So there's an opportunity for you to really look at your hopes and your dreams, what you believe about the vibe ability of that are you nurturing yourself and those dreams and in doing so you are you are inadvertently loving on and nurturing those that you love their dreams and their desires okay leo this virgo full moon is going to be in your second house this feels very powerful to me because the second house is a money house it is a house that rules my my talents and my skills, my voice out in the world, and Leo is the performer. So I believe that there's an opportunity for you to unshackle yourself to any versions of yourself that don't serve your highest and greatest um, joys, your highest and greatest dreams, those things that you want. Let's say you want to be an actor. Let's say you want to be an artist or a painter, um, allowing yourself the privilege of that without looking about the money. It's almost as if um, this illumination that the full moon offers. Yeah, I don't know where y'all are going to 
come in on this um, video. So I, I'm repeating some things um, and it feels to me at nauseum, but I'm gonna repeat it again here. This full moon is making an in conjunction to Venus, Chiron and Jupiter in Aries. Aries is Leo's ninth house and the Virgo full moon is your second house. Both houses um, have this, it, it's the ninth house is about what do I believe in myself? Giving myself permission to go into a foreign area in some ways, to, to rewrite my beliefs and how I feel I express myself. And, and this this in conjunction is this journey down a path. And then I get to a place where I'm going around a bend and I can't quite see what's coming. And so there is the potential that Leo inadvertently, you are operating on old patterns, old historic patterns of what your family told you about your talents about. I remember years ago writing a story. I must've been about seven, maybe eight years old. And I wrote a story I was staying with my dad. My parents were divorced when I was very young. And I was so excited to share this story with my dad. And I walked up and I gave him the story. It must have been two or three lines. And he read it and handed it back to me. And the only thing he said was, maybe you should write the title after you write the story. And it diminished me. It, de it, it just deflated me in that very moment. And I felt like my father was no longer a safe place for me to express my talents because he was so critical. And he was critical. So here, I think that Leo has an opportunity to rewrite their beliefs and to rewrite how your family assigned your talents. And if for some reason you've been operating on a wound that's been holding yourself back, because we also have the moon and the sun making aspects to Uranus and Taurus, which is your 10th house of public status and career. We have the moon making a trine to Uranus and we have the sun making a sextile. Both of these aspects are favorable and they're giving you an opportunity not to try to release it because that's you know not an easy thing for the human to do, but to incorporate it so that it makes you powerful and allows you the expression and liberation of your own ideas to, to recognize and to have faith in, in your own talents and your own brilliance. Because um, Pisces, where the, the sun is, is your eighth house of transformation. It's an opportunity to dig deep into a psychological imprint. I think this is the most powerful thing about the eighth house is that it operates on such a deep psychological imprint, much of which can be toxic because we've given our power up to another dynamic. And so here there's an opportunity to reconcile all of these things. The final aspect that I think is so important um, during this moon is the sun and the moon will both be making a square to Mars. And Right now, it's, it's a five degree square, uh, but it feels increasing to me. It feels as if there is this tense, you know, the sun and the moon are, are making a square to Mars because there's a part of me that is, you know, the sun sort of is how people identify us, how we project ourselves out into the world and how we are, uh, I hate to use the word categorized, but people do that. And the moon is this interior job, this, this emotive energy. And so here we sit with Leo, you know, what you want and what's expected from, you know, this old dynamic of who you are and how you've been perceived and how you perceive your family and, and your viability and your talents in relation to them. And then this new part of you that feels like the moon begging to be expressed, this inner emotional excitement and creativity that wants to come out. And so this is an opportunity to illuminate and to look at where you have inadvertently held yourself back because you've been operating on an imprint, on a pattern, on something that has been psychologically holding you small. And now it's time to be brave and courageous and allow yourself that expression. All right, Virgo, this new moon, is, I'm sorry, full moon is in your first house of self. It is going to be making an in conjunction to Venus, Chiron, and Jupiter in your eighth house of transformation. An in conjunction is a blind spot. It's going down a path and thinking you see where you're going and then you're coming around a bend and there's something you're not expecting. What you're not expecting is an old imprint is you could potentially have thought a certain thing for such a long time and then all of a sudden you're like, I don't know if that thought's working for me anymore. 
I don't know if, if that is actually enslaving me to something that I no longer want to experience or need to experience. We have this, uh, th and this could very well be something to do with relationships as well, because Pisces is your seventh house, the full moon is in your first house, and this opposition could be creating some sort of illumination in how you've been potentially operating in relationships. Again, there is a there is a blind spot. Venus representing my value and my self worth, um, also my ability to make money. The seventh house is not just intimate partners; it's also business relationships, contractual partnerships. There is also the idea that Virgo represents work and health and stress, and you identify very much with your service. Absolutely. Virgo first house, but are you being of service to yourself that then fuels your ability to be of service to others? We see um, Uranus has been transiting your ninth house for quite some time, rewriting your beliefs in yourself. And during this full moon, there the moon and the sun will both be making favorable aspects to Uranus. The moon will be making a trine and the sun will be making a sextile, offering you liberation and also an opportunity to really check in and believe in yourself and your brilliant ideas. This is like taking the, you know, Mercury is the lower octave of Uranus. Uranus is, a, is brilliance, genius, innovation, invention. So this is an opportunity to reinvent yourself as you rewrite your beliefs and allow for the transformation that Venus, Jupiter, and Chiron offer you as it goes through your eighth house. Now, the final aspect that I think is important is the square to Mars. Now, this is kind of a loose square, but it feels like a very palatable square to me. A square for me is this tense conversation between old pattern ways of being that on some level are unconscious, and this full moon will illuminate that as it makes its in conjunction to Venus, Chiron, and Jupiter. And then this new version of myself that is not quite anchored into my physical experience, but yet still very much <clears throat> a, a journey of newness for me. So here, there is an opportunity to be brave. This Mars has been in Gemini for almost seven months. It will finally leave into Cancer the end of March, March being a pivotal month. Um, so here's an opportunity for you to really rewrite yourself in, in your public sector, how people view you, giving yourself an opportunity to put yourself as a priority and make sure you're enjoying your work environment. You're enjoying the things that you uh, do to, for your health, you know, taking time, making that a priority. And also there is the potential that, um, well, pets is another thing that happens in Virgo. So I don't know why I want to say this, but you may end up getting a pet <laughs> or you may be, um, you know, you may have uh, a new family member. And I don't know why I want to say it. It's just coming across that way. All right, let's go on to our Libras. Libra, um, Virgo is your 12th house. And to me, this is very, very powerful for you because this 12th house energy is going to be making a, a, um, a in conjunction to your seventh house of partnerships. So here we have the 16 degree Virgo full moon. What have I inadvertently enslaved myself to? And sometimes I do that mentally, not just physically. So here, this could potentially be things that you've enslaved yourself to as a result of ancestral patterns of parts of yourself that you don't really see that are that that are sitting behind you that's the 12th house and we add the idea that this full moon is making an in conjunction to venus your ruler the chiron your wound and jupiter your belief system this in conjunction is a blind spot. It's like going around a bend. You can see part of the road, but then there gets a place where you can't see something. And here, I believe that's the ancestral pattern. I believe that for Libra, this is all happening in your house of partnerships and how you operate. And if you've been giving up too much of yourself and waiting for the partner's professional and, and 
and personal to meet you halfway, this is an opportunity for you to meet yourself halfway because Pisces is your sixth house of slavery. And I think this is an opportunity to release yourself from servitude that is out of balance. I feel as if sometimes the cooperative planets and cooperative signs inadvertently enslave us to somebody else's agenda. And it's important for us to have our agenda on the table and give it as much value as we do another's. So you've got this full moon in your 12th house illuminating how you um, perceive yourself and your duty. And it is inadvertently going to illuminate a blind spot that you have, a place where you could potentially not be valuing yourself or not allowing your own talents and your own skills to be birthed out into the world. This full moon is making aspects to Uranus, which is Taurus. Taurus is Libra's again, eighth house. So there's that liberation. There's that opportunity to, to feel anew, to feel reinvented. The moon will making a trine to uh, Uranus at 15 degrees and the sun will be making a sextile. So you can really feel a sense of of transformation, of maybe even a little bit of independence where you've been overly dependent um, or overly married to the family history and what it's done and if it's held you back in some ways. The final thing I want to talk about is the sun and the moon making a square to Mars in Gemini. This is your ninth house. And um, this is, this is, Again, for me, squares are tensions between an old version and a new version. So something that I'm used to thinking, used to behaving, used to believing, in, I might even op operate unconsciously this direction. And then this new opportunity to move in a new direction where it requires more intention and more conscious thought. And the, the tenseness comes from not knowing if it's going to be accepted by those that I love and the potential of feeling rejected as I put myself first rather than putting others ahead of myself. And I do believe that ultimately this is going to be very powerful for you because your excitement and your exhilaration for what you're birthing will be palatable to others and enrolling to them and engaging to them. Okay, Scorpio, this full moon is in your 11th house. The 11th house, again, is the house of hopes and dreams. It is a Upachaya house, so it rewards over time as it's traditionally um, ruled by Saturn. It also rules money. So this is an opportunity for you to come into some sort of uh, culmination about your hopes and your dreams. And if for some reason uh, you have been inadvertently giving up your power to the network or your nervous system. If you've been feeling a sense of anxiety, which would not be unusual right now, these are very anxious times, but there's, there's an opportunity here for you to um, reinvent yourself because this, um, this full moon is in your 11th and fifth house. Both represent uh, personal expression. The fifth house is the naturally ruled by Leo, the conception of children, the uh, birthing of your own talents and your own um, gifts and skills. This is a house where we enjoy things romance and sex and and we have fun we play games and entertainment and the 11th house is taking that out into humanity the the big picture of things so for me this could be an illumination for you as to are you willing to birth the deeper parts of your own self expression and what you find enjoyable and entertaining out into the world the the this one little thing that that I that I think is important for Scorpio is that this there's an aspect called an inconjunction that's happening uh, for Scorpio in your house of Aries. This is like a blind spot you can't see. It's like traveling down a road and coming around a corner, and you're like, "Whoa, there's a detour sign." Aries is your sixth house of service. So I think what's happening here is you may inadvertently think that because Virgo and Pisces is in this this access of birthing yourself into the world through your own talents, your own self-expression, you may feel as if 
can I make money at that? I'm not sure. I don't know. I don't know if right now is really important to worry about that, but rather to allow the birth of the of the idea. And and the full moon doesn't necessarily, you know, we 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 focus on it being an ending, but I want to focus on it being an illumination. So it brings forth a piece of information and that piece of information feels like it's that blind spot is illuminated. And Venus represents my self-worth and my talents. Jupiter represents expansion and my beliefs about my expansion, my faith in myself. And then we have Chiron, which is the wound, and then the flip side of that coin is the gift. So this is really powerful for you um, because you have an opportunity, as I said, to liberate yourself from any of those energies that you feel um, tethered to. Taurus can be a little bit stubborn and a little bit rigid, as can Scorpio. And this might be um, a little bit of that because Uranus has been in your seventh house of partnerships for quite some time. And this full moon is making aspects to Uranus, the moon making a trine, the sun making a sextile, giving you an opportunity to extract wisdom and a sense of peace and harmony as you are illuminated in this area. We also see in your eighth house of Gemini, Mars has been transiting that house for quite some time. And at this full moon, while it is not a tight square, it is creating creating a square nonetheless, that to me is a tense conversation between an old version of myself and a new version of myself. The old version is tried and true and tested, and the new version is very untested and unstable here in your house of, of transformation. So as you dig deep into your own powerful co-creator, because Scorpio, you're very powerful. And I think sometimes you don't realize you're so powerful because so many humans are trying to to mask and to, to fog up their deep psychology. And you can fetter that out better than others. And sometimes knowing that deep psychology of other people will have you dumbed down so you don't ruffle their feathers. Here, I feel like Mars is asking you to be brave. Mars is asking you to be courageous and pioneering in your transformation. <clears throat> okay, Sagittarius. This uh, full moon in Virgo is in your 10th house of public status and career. <clears throat> it is giving you an opportunity to have an illumination. I don't, I don't for some reason want to necessarily say this is the culmination of a cycle because I believe that these full moons at the 16th degree are speaking to each other month after month after we're, as we liberate ourselves with the final 16 degree full moon being uh, in Libra during Aries season. So here, I think this is an opportunity for Sagittarius to truly um, look at your career. And if you're giving yourself permission to express your personal talents, your gifts, um, there is a in conjunction happening, a blind spot um, to this full moon in your fifth house of Aries. The blind spot is, is talking to Venus, Chiron and Jupiter. Venus is at 18 degrees Aries, um, which is the Virgo degree. We have Chiron at 14 degrees Aries, and then Chiron is making a conjunction to Jupiter. This is in your fifth house. So I think that there's an opportunity for you to birth a new version of yourself as you are illuminated through this full moon, where you may have inadvertently enslaved yourself to being more aware of other people's impression of you or how you're landing on people versus allowing yourself to express yourself unabashedly and authentically and then allow that expression to bring in the natural tribe that will resonate with your talents. You know, Pisces is your fourth house. Virgo is your um, 10th house. And there could potentially be this, um, you know, Pisces naturally rules ancestors and a sense of history. And with Pisces being your fourth house, you may inadvertently be tethering yourself to uh, whatever the fourth house is requiring of you. You may be holding yourself back because, you know, the home life uh, needs you to have a day job to provide resources. There could be a, a whole bunch of stories, but as you allow yourself to, to, 
let this blind spot that you're going to be experiencing through Jupiter and Chiron and Venus's influence. Now that you have this piece of information, you have an opportunity to reinvent yourself and create partnerships. And I feel like these are professional partnerships because again, this full moon is in the 10th house, um, illuminating dynamics between your 10th and fourth house. And now we see... <clears throat> In the seventh house of Gemini, Mars has been transiting for almost seven months, asking you to be brave and pioneering in how you create your professional partnerships. I'm not necessarily um, resonating with romance right now, although it could be um, because the 10th house can also represent a change in public status going from single to married, from childless to parent. Uh, that kind of thing as well. But here, for some reason, it's resonating a little bit more with work because I have the moon and the sun making favorable aspects to Taurus, your sixth house. And this is, they're making it to Uranus. So there's an opportunity to liberate yourself in some ways, to have a, a liberating thought or idea or, uh, you know, allowing for some reinvention of yourself. And again, this is where I feel like Sagittarius is the natural traveler. You know, you with ease, you move into different situations and you can adapt and you can uh, thrive. So this is a real opportunity to allow for this transformation because with, with Gemini being your seventh house, I feel like this is about building a new community potentially and about potentially using your talents and your gifts in a way that becomes more obvious to others. And in doing so, you stand in leadership and in to benefit. Jupiter is your naturally, naturally your ruling planet. And here in Aries, I think this is going to give you an opportunity to have a renewed sense of believing in yourself and having faith in yourself and your talents and really feeling that sense of, I don't know how I'm going to land on the outside world, but as long as I'm landing on myself in a way that makes me feel exhilarated and inspired, it's all good. So this is very exciting. Capricorn. Virgo is your ninth house of beliefs, of faith, of phil philosophy, and ideology. And I believe that this full moon in Virgo at the 16th degree is going to illuminate for you new beliefs that you've been working on since Pluto's been transiting your first house. It is making aspects to your fourth house of Aries. This aspect is an in conjunction, which is a blind spot. It's like traveling down a road and going around the bend and you can't quite see what's on the other side of that bend. And it could be a detour because we have Venus, Jupiter, and Chiron around that bend. So you're going to have an opportunity to really reinvent yourself in your fourth house of Aries in how you perceive your family imprint the obligations you have to your family and how much more benefit you can be to your family or to the family history or to, in many ways, nurturing and your intuitive body, allowing your, your, your fourth house of Aries to be brave and courageous in trusting the inner voice while the Capricorn in you wants to see it solid. Is that realistic and practical? The reinvention of Capricorn is not to give up practicality and reality, but to reframe what practicality and reality is. Practicality is believing in my sense, which puts my belief in myself in a realistic place within the human structure. So I think this is super, super, powerful because Capricorn Pisces is your third house, which represents the monkey mind, the everyday thoughts. And the ninth house represents that, that bigger philosophical belief. Who am I? What am I? How do I present and bring value to the world? So this is a reconciliation of that experience. And this idea that the sun and the moon are making um, aspects to your fifth house, to Uranus, positive aspects. So we've got the moon making a trine to Uranus in your fifth house. We've got the sun making a sextile to your fifth house. This is really about your own personal pleasure and enjoyment. I'm not going to talk about romance right now or the birthing of children, but Capricorn being the dutiful hard worker that you are to see the wisdom of enjoyment, relaxation, fun, a little time in the sun underneath the um, an umbrella with a poo poo platter and a nice beverage. This would do you a world of good because 
I believe that this liberation that Uranus is offering you in your fifth house will bring you into a new sense of purpose and a new sense of viability as you allow for both your personal and professional lives to come together, your duty and obligation to come together with your enjoyment and entertainment. So we're going to see the final aspect is the sun and the moon, both making a square to Mars in Gemini and Gemini is your sixth house of service. So the square for me, Terry, an intuitive astrologer is a tense conversation with myself about an old tried, true and tested way of being. Whether it has created abundance is not really relevant. It's what I know versus what I don't know. The untested, the new version of myself and how will it be received by others? This is in your sixth house of work. And I believe that this is an opportunity for you to be seen as um, an evolved leader, one that knows the power and the What's the word I want to use? Power is the best word I can think of, of balance, of the, the importance of, of production and the importance of pleasure and playtime. And this is where we go from the old goat to the baby goat. So this is a super great and powerful moon for you. Aquarius, Virgo is your eighth house of transformation. This is going to be a very <clears throat> powerful full moon because you are about to feel Pluto go into your first house and offer you a new sense of liberation and of self-expression. And so when I see that Virgo is your eighth house of service and, and slavery, and and we say slavery because we it, it, Virgo is the servant, and most humans at this juncture are enslaved to their jobs because they're enslaved to their financial dynamic. Here, Aquarius, I think this is a real opportunity for you to, I feel like this is where you are starting to recognize where your mind tends to go into giving its power up to another. You know, Aquarius rules the nervous system and Aquarius also rules invention and technology and things that the human feels is space age. You know, things that 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 aren't really, you're not really able to see in, in the 3D world. We can't, we can see stars, but we can't see the multitude of stars in the sky. So here there's this feeling of giving new life and independence to those that you have inadvertently felt either you had to be responsible for, you had to take care of them, or they had to take care of you. Because this is making an aspect to your third house and the third house being Aries. So where I'm going with this is that the full moon is making an in conjunction to the house of Aries, to Venus, my self-worth and my talents, my money, to Chiron, my wound, but also the transformation of that wound into a gift. And then Jupiter, those big ideas. Who am I? Why am I here? Do I have faith in myself? And this is where the third house being Aries is like having to be brave in, in reinventing myself and not getting too caught up in the everyday activities in the human structure that I as an Aquarius want to rebel against because I know there's more out there that can be then can be seen with my physical eyes. So I feel like there's a real opportunity for this, um, this blind spot to create a, a moment of liberation. It's almost as if I, I, I feel like this blind spot. So you're traveling down this road and as you come around the bend, you really don't know what's there. And when Aquarius gets there, it feels as if you almost stop and it gives you an opportunity to decide if you want to continue on the same direction or to move in a new direction. And this is really, really powerful. And I think it has a lot more to do with concentrated thought. We have this full moon making an aspect to your fourth house of Taurus. Uh, the moon itself will make a trine to Uranus in Taurus and the sun will make a sextile, sextile to Uranus in Taurus. These are both favorable aspects, feeling like it brings me a sense of harmony and peace as I reconcile my childhood experiences, 
my sense of nurturing myself and I start to really nurture my intuit intuition and my my inner knowing giving life to that inner knowing versus it just feeling like anxiety I've been saying to Aquarius for quite some time that I believe that when you feel a sense of anxiousness it is your over soul calling you forth uh, pulling you away from the mundane and into the brilliance into your genius and sometimes that may feel a little unnerving for you or it may rub up against how you have been perceived by your family or what your family expects of you if you're an Aquarius and you really embrace your genius and your family is more uh, routine they love everyday activities they're not looking to stretch to be genius there may be a rub there and this may have caused you to want to dumb down so that you can fit in with the pack this full moon is going to illuminate that and stretch you beyond that because Pisces is your second house and the sun being in your second house making that sextile to Uranus is giving you an opportunity to liberate yourself from that family history second house is naturally ruled by Taurus and Uranus is in Taurus right now, and this aspect has given you this opportunity. We also have um, one final thing for Aquarius is the square between the sun and the moon in your uh, two Mars in your fifth house of Gemini. Uh, this to me is a square is a tense conversation between an old version of myself that I'm used to, that I operate unconsciously on, and then a new version of myself that is not tested, not anchored, not rooted, very conceptual, and yet very attractive to me. And the tension comes from, from wanting to sort of move this way and, and feeling that push-pull. The fifth house of Gemini would be a self-expression house, things that you enjoy that are probably very cerebral in some ways. You may enjoy word games, you may enjoy puzzles, you may enjoy spending time alone reading and researching and, and gathering knowledge. All of this um, feels important to me as if when you acquiesce and surrender to your gifts and your talents, you start to rewrite your whole uh, physical experience in a way that can liberate you from the human structure that we have built um, our lives upon, and now going into this new uh, version that's much more Aquarian. We're headed towards the Aquarian age where our thoughts will become uh, our thoughts become things. And while that appears to be just a concept at this stage in human evolution, it will become a divine principle that we operate on much more regularly and much more uh, succinctly and on a solid platform. And Aquarius, you're birthing that right now. And as Pluto is about to move into your first house, you have a real opportunity to reinvent yourself. And, I, and I, I'm just going to bring this up. I said at the beginning of the video, Saturn's moving into Pisces on the same day as this full moon. So there's a very strong energy here. All right, let's go to our final sign, Pisces. This Virgo full moon is going to be in your seventh house of relationships. The sun is in your first house. The moon is in your seventh house. There's going to be some sort of uh, awakening, uh, some sort of revelation. And it comes as a result of the journey that you're taking, where you're suddenly going down the road and you get to this blind spot known as Venus, Jupiter, and Chiron in Aries in your second house. I believe that what this is going to illuminate is an unconscious pattern where you have inadvertently acquiesced your talents or your compassion and your empathy and your wanting to be cooperative. And even maybe even that 12th house energy of not really being able to see yourself as, as, you know, maybe you allow yourself to dream in the privacy of your own bedroom, but you, you keep that to yourself when other people are around. This feels as if it's an opportunity to release yourself from that and to allow yourself to birth that creativity, that imagination, that fancy, that whimsical, part of you into the 3D world. And I say that because with Aries being your second house, there is this opportunity to really look down at your talents. I, I could go to your family history, but for some reason, I want to go to your talents. Pisces is your first house. Aries is your second house. Um, 
Virgo is your seventh house of professional partnerships, not just intimate partnerships. So as you become more willing to expand upon and to trust your talents and to have faith in yourself, that's Jupiter and Venus and, and Chiron transforming that wound into a gift in your second house. I believe there's an opportunity for you to make money. There is a trine aspect with the moon trining Uranus in Taurus and and the sun sextiling Uranus in Taurus in your fourth, I'm sorry, in your third house. This to me feels as if there is this way of liberating yourself from, from your, how you've been perceived throughout your childhood, through the relationships you have with your siblings. When I was younger, I was teased relentlessly as a child, which made me feel outcasted. I was uh, compared to my siblings in ways that felt unfavorable to me. And this um, spawned me into a certain direction. Pisces, I believe this is an opportunity to see things from a more broad perspective, to re uh, invent yourself and redefine yourself as to who you are, what you are, and how you want to express your talents in the world. And this trine and sextile to Uranus is going to support that. The final aspect that I think is important is the sun and the uh, moon are both making a square to your fourth house, Gemini, where Mars has been transiting for the last six and a half, almost seven months. This square for me is a tense conversation between what used to be, what is historic, what is patterned, what is familiar, what is other people expect of me, and then who I want to be, what I want to express, and how I want to move myself forward. Now, if Pisces has been one of those empathetic partners who always said, oh, I'm so sorry you're in pain. How can I help your pain? Let's talk about your pain. And then you're suddenly realizing through your spiritual evolution that to talk about pain is giving life to that pain. And so your empathy for the pain is diminishing and your um, compassion for the journey of pain is growing and your understanding that pain can be a motivator sometimes, that discomfort can propel us in a new direction because I think what's going to happen is this uncomfortable conversation is going to propel you into self-nurturing and to trusting that intuitive part of yourself that you may have given up to others or given up to a bigger concept or maybe you've just felt so unseen by your family because you're the, the one that always does what you're supposed to do or you're always there with that tender ear this is an opportunity for you to rewrite that and to start to play to your creativity and your imagination and the things that you want to experience and allow yourself that um, reinvention, that renovation of who and what you are. Again, this full moon is the sixth of seven full moons at the cancer degree. So these full moons have been illuminating where we don't trust our inner knowing, where we don't listen to our inner voice and intuition, and where we give up what we want for another, where, where that inadvertently creates disruption within us. And now we want to claim our happiness back in a much stronger, more palatable, more, more uh, concrete and earth bound way. So this is a wonderful full moon. Again, be mindful that Saturn is moving into Pisces. So you could feel an initial sense of, but that's only because Saturn is going to ask you, are you really working towards your dreams? Saturn is going to hold your feet to the fire. Um, and not because Saturn wants to punish you, but because Saturn expects commitment. And if inadvertently we've been committing to something that isn't authentic to our heart, it will be it will be painful. But when we're committed to something in our heart, it will be joyful even during the times of distress and pain. All right, that's it for me, everybody. Again, my name is Terry Hunter. I'm an intuitive astrologer. Please join me Sunday mornings live, 11 a.m. Pacific time. This is where we do our angel readings. We get advice from the angels for how to traverse the week ahead's transits. If you'd like to book a reading with me, reach out. You can reach out uh, via my email. And please like, please subscribe, please hit that notification bell and comment. I try to comment. If I haven't commented, I try to hit the little 
heart to let you know I saw it. Um, I'm really excited about a lot of more content that I'll be producing. So enjoy this full moon, allow it to illuminate a path of happiness and prosperity for you. All right, everybody, that's it. Peace out. Peace out. Ha, 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 ha.